and we are live hello facebook how is everybody doing today listen you know it's always exciting to have someone you know to interview that's going to you know enlighten you empower and just give good good information solid information no fluff and genuinely a super nice person and so before we get into all of that, this is Strategic Exodus podcast, where the guests that come on, we talk about exiting strategically. You know, for those of you who know me, I am an advocate, you know, for those who are in domestic violent relationships, where I'm always talking about strategy, how to get out and how to get to a safe place. How is it that you can maneuver, you know, through stuff that's not great, those hard times, those difficult times. The same thing and the same premise applies in business. It applies in, you know, while you're being an author or while you're being a speaker or while you're, you know, on your journey to podcasting, a brick and mortar. We all have to have strategy. We have to have a plan. If you've got a plan that's only in your head, guess what, newsflash? It ain't a plan till it gets to paper, people. Got to get to paper. And so I bring to you somebody who has gone through all of those motions to get right where she is. So let me read to you, read you this wonderful bio of Canberra Glover. So Canberra is the social media manager, you know, your business needs for your business needs. She focuses on organic social media and building a community of people that like, know, trust, and purchase from your brand. She uses her skills to assist you with content, strategy, and engagement. Her clientele includes spa, coaches, consultants, and food and beverage businesses. She is passionate about helping businesses in their areas reach their business and social media goals. And we're gonna give you all of the wonderful links of how you're gonna reach her because I know that you're gonna to want to talk to her. If you have a business, you need to be right here right now. If you know somebody who has a business, guess what? You need to call and get them here because we're going to have a great and wonderful conversation about, listen, I'm so excited because everything you described is about family and relationship. Hamber, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Thank you very much <laughs> for allowing me the opportunity. Oh, listen, I, it's, 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 it's really a blessing to be able to come before people with those who are passionate about what they do. And I just want to start, if you don't mind, we all have a journey, we all have a walk to right where we are, to our present, whether or not we're doing what it is that we need to do, or we're trying to get there, or it's just a thought in the head. So how did you come to be right where you are, helping and assisting coaches and consultants and businesses? How did you arrive to right where you are? Um, well, um, we can start with the fact that I moved to North Carolina from um, from Oklahoma to go to college. I went to college for culinary school and um, I was in the working in the culinary field, starting my own business, and I just wasn't liking it anymore. But I was trying to stick it out, trying to make sure that it's not just me being fearful, it is actually that I don't really like it. So um, sometimes those things can get blurred. So I stuck it out. Um, I was still doing my business and I was using social media and learning about social media for business and how you can actually use it to elevate your business. So in the time that I was kind of falling out of love with culinary and falling in love with marketing and using social media for good, um, and even greater than just being on it, just scrolling and wasting my time, um, I, I made that transition. I kind of stopped doing culinary but I still wanted to work with the culinary field. So I do still take on culinary clients, but I took that 
that time to really figure out what I enjoy and about social media and how I can use it to help um, women to get to the next level. So I really focus on helping women um, build their businesses on social media, even those who have great businesses, using their platform for better and to help other people and reach the people that they want to reach. That's amazing because, um, you know, we have this idea, oh, I want to start a business and not realizing, you know, the behind the scenes may have some indication of some of the behind the scenes that, you know, if we're, you know, going to culinary school, such as, you know, your travel, um, you know, but when it gets to the point of, oh, I've got to build landing pages. Oh, I, I, I've got to be able to talk to people. All I want to do is to bake. All I want to do is just write a book. Trust me. Trust me. That's <laughs> where I just started. I promise you that all I wanted to do was just to speak. And that took some getting to. So when you went through this process, and mind you, the journey in which you, you know, the route in which you went, going to culinary school, I know that you learned some skills there in order to help you right, right. where you are. So mm -hmm. even though you may not have enjoyed it and liked it, it was beneficial to you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so after, you know, getting to, okay, I, I'm really a master at helping women in their businesses. What are some of the obstacles that you, you know, came up against in, in helping in the area and what it is that you wanted to help women with? Well, the first thing that I had to overcome is my fear because I don't feel like I like talking, you know, like I, but you got to do that if you want to be successful. I um, was scared that, you know, nobody's going to listen to me. I'm just a little girl from Oklahoma. Who cares what I got to say? But you have to get over those things and really put yourself out there. So those, so fear was the biggest thing I had to get over. And then also thinking that other people are not going to be able to transition with me. So it was a huge kind of fast leap from culinary to marketing but you know it's okay people change their minds all the time and that's what connects me to a lot of people is they're like i started this thing and i don't like it anymore and now i'm doing this big thing i want to have my own business and everything like that so it everything actually lines up and it was like me understanding that was the biggest the biggest thing that i had to so that, that that was a mindset shift in right. my in my group, uh, life after domestic violence, excuse me, life after domestic violence, social butterflies, my clients, this is what I tell them all of the time. If you have fear in your life, if you are afraid to talk to people, and that's fine, I mean, that's a normal thing, you know. It, I wanted to be a speaker and I've had no problem getting in front of other people and speaking in large groups. That, that was an, an issue, but I was talking with someone else about some, about their product and service. Mm. When it came to my stuff and talking yep. about my stuff for the first time, Ooh, man, then get the defibrillators. I've done it. <laughs> Trust me. That thing was deep, but I share with my clients all of the time that if it's if you've got fear in your life and particularly if the, for those women that i deal with they've had abuse and mm -hmm. so they've been told that they were nothing that they're no one you can't yeah. do anything even you know being bullied as a child if that has been in your life if anyone has spoke negativity in your life when you are the adult and you want to make that leap into a speaker author you know, uh, owner of a brick and mortar and, and have your own business, whatever it may be. When it comes time to having to talk to people and actually getting outside of yourself, there's natural fear. But when you think and have a self-worth issue, that fear, man, will either stifle you, stop you dead in your tracks, or be wise enough to understand that I have to have a mindset shift to change. Yeah. 
And that's where coaching such as yourself comes into play. People, if you're not listening, I need you to hear this young woman. If you have a business, she just said it herself, if you have a business, you need coaching and you need coaches because there is no such thing as a one-stop shop coach. Yeah. You need coaching. Can you speak to that, about that mindset shift? How do you shift women in the business mind from being a consumer to being a producer? Okay, so I, since I mostly focus on social media, um, a lot of a lot of business women, especially when they're first starting, they just want to, oh, I just want to put up stuff. You know, I just want to randomly do stuff. I'm like, wait, hold up. We got to, we got to have a strategy. We got to like, you know, that is part of your mindset shift is like, you can't just throw up stuff and think it's going to work. You have to be strategic and you have to be careful about what you do. So that is a huge mindset shift that I have to talk through with business owners, especially new business owners, because they're like, well, but it's my page. I just want to do what I want to do. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a business. So we have to do things a little bit differently. We have to kind of talk through things and see how we're going to get to our goals because, you know, we don't want this to just be this quick thing, 15 minutes of fame and that's it. Like we want you to have a long lasting business. We want you to be able to connect with people that want you and actually make an impact on the world or the people around you. Yeah, um, Camber, can you please explain to the viewing audience that, you know, the puppy dogs and the cute little kittens and, and what you ate for dinner and you at the restaurant chilling with your mouth closed and then you got your book and then you got your event all on the same page. Can you yeah. explain a little bit more in depth about when you want a business or when you're trying to have a business and then you have your personal life, how important is it to be laser focused and strategic in your planning of your social media? That part, I am, you know, I'm getting a little bit astounded with LinkedIn. LinkedIn and I, I I'm going to be honest, it's an honest moment. Me and Link, LinkedIn and I, we're not friends. <laughs> we have just recently begun to date and I'm enjoying it. However, I'm seeing it at times look a little bit like the Facebook regular page. Mm -hmm. um, just, I don't know. Um, can you explain the importance of platforms? and how you as a business owner and author a speaker how do you present yourself how should you be looking like what are some of the things that are needed on a on any social media platform so the first thing that i want to tell you is that you want to make sure that you have maybe three to four topics that you talk about but everything has to go back to your brand, your story, and who you are. So if you are posting the cat videos, the puppy videos, how does that relate to your business, right? So that's what we're interested in. And it also has to relate to your audience because we don't care if it just relates to you and then you lead us nowhere. We don't care about it. We're unfollowing you, we're muting you, we're done. Um, so you have to post things that we care about that relate to your business that will keep us interested. So it's not just posting something cute and funny. There has to be a reason behind it. So um, having three to four topics that you typically talk about, whether it's um, you know your brand story, uh, tips that you use to do your business, or different tools that you use to make your business easier, just stick to those topics and share that information um, because you don't want it to look like your personal page. Sure, we want to get to know you. Put your personality in there, but don't just, you know, scroll on Facebook and be like, oh, this looks cute, like you do on your personal page. Like, it's totally different. Yeah, um, I don't, you know, in the walk of becoming an entrepreneur, there are some who are old school who 
you know, who are just getting into social media. I know a few business, business owners when, you know, when I meet them and I greet and I give them my links and, oh, I'm not on social media at all. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting because everybody who has a business usually is on Facebook at some point. Either they're using, you know, their own personal page or they're using and building, um, you know, their business page, which which Mark is now pushing. You have a business, you're using your business page. You can use your fan page or your personal page for personal stuff. With that being said, he has a reason behind it. And you, in, in your wonderful bio, speaks exactly to it in order to be in business whether you have social media using social media or you have a brick and mortar you're writing a book whatever your business is you're not doing anything if you don't build relationship right and if you want to you know um, build relationship that means that there are some clear cut strategies that you need to be using and utilizing in order to build relationship. And building relationship is just not through throwing up a post. You, and you know that, I know that. It's mm -hmm. more than that. And so how do you encourage that piece, that part about the relationship building? How important is it and what are some ways, maybe one, because we ain't giving up secret sauce. Let's be cheerful and let's be honest. If you want that information, then you need to miss, you need to see Miss Miss Glover. You've got to go see her if you want those secret sauce tips. But what are some of the things that you've found find most important in building that relationship? So um, one of the things that I find most important is that you actually have to respond to comments. So, you know, like that's basic, but I see a lot of business owners who aren't doing it. I realize that you're busy, you got other things in your business to do, but if you want to build those social media um, clients to get those people to your website or to whatever it may be, you need to be responding to their comments and having conversations with them. So. Um, even if you know say they like your page you're not getting a whole lot of comments but you're getting a whole lot of likes use the people that like you go to their page and talk to them respond to their their stuff so you know there's ways to build relationships even in the beginning um yeah you would think that you would you know most people would understand just that simple um, when they comment, go back and respond to their comment. It is, you know, if it, it's like if someone has written you a letter, you read the letter, mm -hmm. you should respond via a phone call, via handwritten letter, I don't know, pigeon carrier, respond <laughs> to the call, you know, the message or the call, however it came to you, that's just common courtesy. Right. We have to think about how we want to be treated. Now, all right, now I'm throwing scripture in there. So, you know, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you get a letter, someone has reached out to you, somebody's given you a comment, somebody said, hello, it's just like passing by. Now, you, you know, you're in North Carolina, right? Yes. So I'm in the I'm in the East in Philadelphia, up the East Coast. It is not common for people to say hello. We pass by mm -hmm. all day long. You may get somebody who'll say hi, and you're like, but <laughs> where you live, everybody speaks. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's strange going into the grocery store and hello, how are you? And I've got to respond. It's the same way. I don't it's it's a practice that we need to get, you know, really comfortable in whether or not we have a business or not. And that's just so simple. Just right. responding. If you're not saying hello, 
there was a telesummit uh, in 2018, and um, I knew that it would be big, but I did not understand at the end of it all, I had over 2,000 people. So the first thing that came to my mind, I tell you, after typing and responding back to everybody that I possibly could, the next day, I literally had my hand in an arm, an arm brace because one, they came, they didn't have to, they were looking for information, they received it, people um, were moved, and it was just ingrained in me that they took the time to make a comment that I have to respond back. You know, I didn't make it through the first weekend, it took me a minute, but I responded back. That's just a simple, a simple right. practice. And so, you know, I'm looking in um, the comments here and Michael Gibson says, great advice, have an electronic conversation, just like a personal conversation. Right. Andrea says, people forget common courtesy. Listen, again, I'm telling you, I'm from the East Coast, man. They just whiz by. And when somebody says hello, you're like shocked because somebody decided to say hi. Andrea says, yeah, Andrea Mirman, she's a good friend. She says, yeah, and see, we're in the house. She said, this is funny. <laughs> when my sister came to visit, she commented on how everyone in North Carolina waved you know, or, you know, spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing in business. So I want to ask you before we can, we can talk, you and I, we could talk all day because <laughs> this is just really, you know, I needed to have you on because there are people out there who don't understand about brand. They don't understand about brand presence, what that means. And I want you to just share just a little bit about brand. When a person has decided, okay, I'm in business and they've got the brick and mortar and they've got maybe their window with their logo. And so the logo, the, you know, the catchphrase, the pitch phrase, what all goes into good branding? What are some of the things that they should be thinking about? Is it color first or forget about color altogether? Is the person who's operating this business or opening the business, are they brand? In other words, are they brand? And if so, how are they brand? Right. Okay. So color is definitely a part of it because color, the psychology of color, we won't get into that today because it's so much, but um, your color relates to the, to the people you are trying to connect with. Um, so you're thinking about your color your personality. So the words that you use matter. So on your page, you can't, you know, curse like a sailor if that's like, if your, if your brand is not that. Does that make sense? Exactly. Um, yes. So, because um, I know that there are people, you know, who every other word out their mouth and that's their brand. Yeah. Right. Right. So it could go either way. Either, you know, that's not who you are in person. That's who you're being on the internet. And that's, you know, they have to match um, or, you know, whatever. Uh, also, um, you want to make sure that um, you are your brand. So, you know, people connect with people these days. It's no longer that we're, even if you do have a brick and mortar, it's not that we are just going into stores anymore. We are connected with the people. That's why malls all over the place are shutting down and um, shops all over the place that we have been going to for years are shutting down because there's no person for us to connect with. So even if you decide, hey, I want to do it like the old way and I don't really want to be the face of my brand, use influencers. That's a great way to still have a face behind your brand and you not have to be it. Oh, so. that's good. Oh, I hope you all took notes. <laughs> that was secret sauce right there. If you do not, I'm not even going to repeat that. You all catch the replay, you all watch that again. That was secret sauce because a lot of people think, well, oh, you must have social media you have to have social media and we look at people and say well 
you know, um, your business is not a true business because, you know, you don't have e-commerce or, you know, you don't have an electronic store set up somewhere. We can't get to you. No, but I know people, plenty of them, who still run their brick and mortar the old school way, and they're doing fine. They're doing well. It's um, something where, sad to say, that some of these bigger stores that are now closing, they did not catch the wave of social media and adopt, maybe because they didn't want to go through changes, but however, what is it that you are doing on the back end to make up for you, right. your social presence? Because social presence is everywhere. So um, I also tell my clients this constantly that, I don't care where you are, just as you said, Canberra, you are your brand. So that means if you're in a, a, a Lyft or Uber ride, mm -hmm. before you get out of that car, they should know who you are, who you serve, and how you serve. They should be able to know how to connect to you. They should have some means of a way in order to connect with you. You don't have any business cards? Guess what? You got a cell phone. Gotta type that stuff in. <laughs> it's just that important. Yeah. Um, so before we give any more secret sauce, because I want you to know this was super amazing. Here is a young woman who's all about relationships, who wants to serve those who are in business, the coaching, you know, the consultants, the spas, food and beverage. She's all over and she understands about branding and, and, and what you need and She's going to tell you, no, you don't do that. And that's what good coaching does. She's a master at what it is that she does. I asked all of my guests, what was the one thing through a part of your journey? Because we know it wasn't smooth sailing always. We know that there were some bumps. There were some times that you would say, up, oh, that's it, I give up. During those times, to where you are right now. What was the one thing, or what is the one thing that you have held on through that entire period to your right now moment? What was that one thing? The one thing that I held on to, um, it would probably have to be that I will always, always, always be myself. So it's easy to get caught up in like, oh, well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing on social media because everybody says that's what you're supposed to do. I, nor will I ever advise my clients to be so, I can't be somebody else. I have to be myself, be true to myself. If I don't feel like an opportunity is good for me um, and it doesn't go along with who I am, I can't do it. If, um, if a client is not right for me, I can't do it. I have to be true to myself. I advise that to my clients. I advise that to everybody I talk to because no one has what you have. You are, you are amazing at who being who you are. So just be that people will appreciate it so much more and you will get so many more opportunities and be able to have so many, so much much better relationships being exactly who you are rather than being a fake version of yourself or someone else listen if you are just tuning in one you've got to go back because we're not doing this all over again my guest today is canberra glover and i just wanted to say that is so huh if we can get a hold of that one piece, even before we start a business, brick and mortar, online, whatever your business may be, that we've got to keep our eyes off of other people. When we see people in our niches, when we see people doing what it is that, oh, I want to do that, oh, I want to do that, and we compare us about how we are currently, and we're looking over there, and you strive to be exactly like that, it will never work because there's no authenticity in it. There's no you. Where are you in your business? Right. When you're speaking during your post, what, you know, what comes out of your mouth? It needs to be you. It can't be anyone else. Right. No one's going to buy. No one's going to knock on the door. No one's going to do the clicks. Why? Because it's not authentic. They can't relate to it because 
how about this? You're not relating to you. Right. <laughs> You're not relating to right. your product and service. If you are seeing and looking at someone, now there's nothing wrong with having an influencer as a goal. There's right. nothing wrong with that. But if you are trying to duplicate it exactly to the T, there's no room for you. You have to be part of, if, you, if you're looking to be exactly like someone else, it's never going to work. No one's ever going to buy from you. You may get a trickle here, a trickle there, but let's be honest, let's be truthful. People can smell whether or not you're authentic, whether or not you're genuine, or whether or not you're trying to pass your product or service off like someone else. You've got to be true. As the kids say, you got to be true to this. <laughs> you know, you got to be true to what you are trying to give other people. If you're not part of it, really, if you're not, it's never going to work. So that was super powerful. Be yourself. Don't make any excuses for the way you do a thing. Right. I had a coach. We just had a meeting today, and she said, you got to be yourself you've got to be yourself or else it's never going to work no matter how many bells and whistles you put in how no many how many events or balloons you throw into the it's never going to work because you've got to be authentic to this and if you don't believe in your own product or service <clears throat> i'm just saying <laughs> if you don't believe in what you're putting out and selling right who else is Exactly. And then you want, then you're expecting people to buy. Let me stop. Listen, we can be here all day and I mean it. So <laughs> I am inviting you back because we need to do this again. I had such a great time. I know that all of the viewers were enlightened. And I know that now for those of you who had any questions about your social media, um, you know, life, what you should be doing, not doing. And if you have any questions, you can find Canberra Glover, and she's going to tell you exactly where to go. So how can we find you? What products and services are you offering? Listen, give it to him because we all need our social media life to be right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So first of all, since you guys are on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at Queen Kia Media, or you can just search Kia Media, K-A-M-E-D-I-A. -A. Um, you can also find me on my website, queenkiamedia.com. Um, and I offer social media management services as well as community management services. A lot of you guys, you know how to post your content. You already know how to do that, but you don't have the time to engage with your audience. So I will help you by engaging with your audience for you um, and really uh, helping you connect with the people, answering those questions for you because you get the same questions over and over again. So I will answer those questions for you. So, <laughs> Um, yeah. Wait, y'all, you all, wait, 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 wait. Let yes, me do this one. I got to do this one. You all, I'm back here. What? Answer my, what? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I respond to all your comments for you as you, as your voice. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> wait a minute. I'm about to, seriously, I'm about to cry because I needed that connection. 2,000 comments ago. <laughs> oh, oh, I could have used my hand. My, I was wrapped up, went to the meeting the next day, my arms like this. Oh, that's amazing. I really thank you so super much for coming. Um, I love this interview. And again, you will most certainly be invited back because we just had a great time. For yes. those of you who um, didn't get a hold of the information, it will be put in the comments and you'll be able to go back later. Um, as I go back, as you know, I go back in the comments and I'll answer all the questions and I'll make sure that all of her links are in the comments so that you can go out and reach out to her. <laughs> you are so, so sweet. Thank you so much for your yes. I know your yes cost you something. Thank you for coming. This is strategic exodus podcast and i just had an awesome time today so for those of you who are interested 
listen, you can go to Spreaker. We'll be able to find this. This will be on my business page, Strategic Exodus Podcast, where you can catch the replay of this. My name is Dorothea Robinson, and I am a podcaster. I am a professional speaker, and I'm an author as well as an exit strategist assisting women getting to safety and doing it safely. So that's it for this particular episode of Strategic Exodus Podcast. And until later, I'll see you. Bye-bye. Thank you.